We're also open evenings of Stoller Center uh, performances and films, and we are also open by appointment. And for classes, we are open anytime you want to bring your class that you make prior arrangements with us. We can be open in the morning or after four o'clock, um, and we're always happy to welcome classes. The gallery is always free, um, and we are really pleased to work with classes in, in any way, um, whether it's uh, as a whole class visit or uh, assignments where you send your students on their own, and we can talk more about that um, at the end. Um, and we'll talk about some examples of how we've worked with professors and classes um, in the past. But I wanted to introduce you to our two fall exhibitions. Um, and again, I'm Karen Levitov, I'm the director, and uh, Georgia Lemaire is the gallery coordinator. Um, our first fall exhibition is going to open this summer with the Stony Brook Film Festival, July 22nd, and then we'll be open at the beginning of the fall semester through October 30th. And it's called Dos Mundos, Reconstructing Narratives. This is a SUNY traveling exhibition um, that is organized by Enfoco. And it is a, an exhibition of 12 artists of color who are exploring issues of struggle, displacement, migration, and representation through photography. Um, so there are lots of different issues uh, that the artists are working with in their, in their work, um, mostly dealing with the duality of traditions of culture in immigrant and ethnic communities. Um, and they are drawing on a lot of current issues. Um, the, the photographers are all selected from um, and focus photography fellows from the past few years. And it's really a diverse and, and fascinating group of artists. I'm going to show you just a few of the uh, photos from the exhibition. There are nearly 40, 40 uh, photographs in the exhibition. And like I said, I'll just show you a handful to give um, a sense of the show. Um, the exhibition itself, Dos Mundos, comes from um, a 1973 exhibition organized by Enfoco when they were focusing on Puerto Rican photographers. Um, and FOCO now has expanded to incorporate fellowships to all our artists of color. And they've expanded these narratives through this exhibition, which is guest curated by Juanita Lanzo and Stephanie Lindquist. Um, the exhibition includes artists who are centering their stories at the fringe of public attention, hidden sanctuaries, subcultures, faraway homes, spirituality, transcendence, broken promises, and as it says, all too easily ignored social ecologies. And this is a photo by uh, Damaris Alvarez, who is looking into the um, punk culture in Havana. And she has three photographs in the uh, exhibit that are in these on these banners that hang from the ceiling. They're really um, beautiful, intriguing photos. And this is Daisha Harris, and it's from, um, it's called Follow Me. And these are looking at, um, she's looking at um, ideas of the, the slavery narrative and the contemporary repercussions of slavery uh, through the metaphor of water and crossing waters as transcending and crossing boundaries. Yu Chen Chios, this is her Arizona 2 um, from the America Scene series. Um, and this is a series of black and white photographs um, that the uh, artist who's originally from Taiwan um, has traveled across America and seen different, um, different um, scenes. This one is a child covering its ears in a shooting range. Antonio Polgorin, whose uh, series namesake, Fragments of the Masculine, uh, deal with issues of masculinity and um, his own identity as a, a queer man originally from um, Colombia. And he's named after his uncle who was in the military. And this, this series um, is reflecting on um, his relationship with his uncle who died before he bo was born. Um, Danny uh, Peralta's photographs are um, taking place uh, in the Bronx. Um, he shoots the these the series is from um, the music and um, DJ culture that he's part of and that he feels is a second family to him. And Erica Morillo's uh, work focuses on her um, her 
different angles and perspectives and reflections. And I think last in this grouping is uh, this uh, Cynthia Santos Briones, and she has a series of photographs uh, in, of people living in sanctuary in churches in New York. And then our second, and we can talk about this um, you know, if you, anybody has questions on this exhibition, um, and we can talk about uh, that at the end. I'll just run through the other exhibition, and then we can go back and talk about anything that people want to talk about. Um, the second fall exhibition opens on November 13th and actually runs through the beginning of the spring semester. And it's called Miscommunication, Language and Power in Contemporary Art. And this is an exhibition that was curated by a PhD student in the art department, Amy Kong, and she won a prize from the SUNY Performing Arts Curation and Creation uh, Award. She won first prize for this uh, exhibition. And the background of this slide is, um, so the, the artists in this exhibition are dealing with um, language and power and specifically about the predominance of English um, uh, in global culture and also in America and how that might feel as someone whose native language may or may not be English and also um, how um, different texts like this, the, the artist of this, Jesse Chun, is looking at how language is taught with these kind of phonetic sounds of ooh and no and on. Um, this is Clarissa Tostin, who's uh, um, a Brazilian artist, and it's about Portuguese vowels. And the, what you're looking at are these small sculptures that are actually made of cast sugar, and they're cast from the inside of, a, of your mouth of someone's mouth, different people's mouths, and how language is formed physically in your mouth. Um, this one also has to do with um, the acquisition of language. Um, you know, uh, Han Johan's Follow Me, uh, which is a video, and it's um, about um, how English is taught uh, specifically in, um, in China and Korea, and how um, babies acquire language, but it's done through like the, the audio of it is um, the sound of a language learning program. Sean Borshan's Song of Sorrow. Um, um, and this is a, a Native American artist who has um, printed the words of the childhood uh, song, 10 Little Indians onto uh, paper that's woven into a traditional Cherokee basket um, to talk about how uh, artists uh, or children, um, native children are often um, discouraged from using their native languages when they're in school and how that those languages then become obsolete if they're not taught and encouraged. Um, this is Christine Sun Kim and Thomas Mader's um, piece. It's another video piece and it is about uh, sign language and how sign language, English, American sign language is not the equivalent of English in terms of how things are described, the words, the culture, and this is done, this video shows the, the game where one person's behind the other one um, uh, pretending to be their hands, but in this case, making the sign language for, for different things. Uh, this is a piece that is, uh, it's a, a game animation, and it's about the um, artist's um, grandmother, who is a Native Australian, and having to do with the language, again, another language that is um, kind of dying out with the, late, the older generation, and uh, the artist wants to encourage um, the continuation of that language and culture. And another video, Martin Sims notes on gesture, and this is about African American mm -hmm. gesture and um, and and phrasing uh, in language and in. These are three sculptural pieces by Don Game, and this is an artist who has variously changed her name to different English. Um, sounding names. Um, so she's named these sculptures after her various names that she's chosen for herself, Erin, Ashley, and Catherine, and they're made out of uh, car muffler parts. Okay, so 
um, before we move on to past collaborations, does anybody have any questions um, about either of the exhibitions? Okay, uh, we can talk more about them as we go. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about some of the past collaborations we've done with faculty. Um, the exhibition Race, Love and Labor, um, I, I co-taught a class with excuse me, with Susan Chappell from the English department. Um, and it was a, an EXP and SPK course um, that we met once a week in the gallery with a small group of students. And the students then um, learned about the, the exhibition and the works on view. And then they themselves uh, presented tours to either their groups of friends or clubs um, in order to get an SPK credit. Um, and they also um, then gained experience learning how a museum and a gallery functions um, for uh, hands-on EXP credits. Um, this one is an art and diagnostic observation and medicine class project. Um, and this one was not one that we organized, but that we opened up the gallery to allow um, the instructor to bring her students in and do a project that they wanted to do using the art as a diagnostic tool of how to observe closely um, um, in art and then relate to medicine. Uh, so this one was a um, extra credit assignment that an instructor from the history department did um, the class was global history and geography. So um, he had his students come on their, you know, out of class time and ask um, these questions specifically about um, an art piece by Fred Wilson that was in the gallery. So um, asking about, you know, what would, what did the artist try to convey about taking out certain um, continents of the US. And then I think we just listed um, a bunch of other um, past course collaborations um, or you know, departments that um, have used the gallery before. We had um, a French class come when we had an exhibition um, of artists in Senegal because the labels um, were also in French. Um, we have had creative writing students come and just spend an hour in the gallery, you know, um, coming up with creative writings or responses to um, artwork on view. Um, we had a dance improv, so um, we had a the class come and um, move their bodies in different ways in response to the art, which was a really interesting and, and fun one. Um, and then the last thing then I'll say uh, about the ones I remember is uh, we just recently did one with computer science. So um, we actually worked with students in their class for them to come up with um, resources that the gallery could use. So um, they coded um, and put together an interactive art on campus map, which we haven't um, rolled out yet because that was just this past spring. And they also put together a um, behind the scenes curator tool for us to use. Karen, was there anything else you want to add about this one? Um, no, I don't think there was anything else on this other than just, as I said at the beginning, that, you know, class collaborations have been from, you know, the entire class to specific projects to, um, you know, to a tour to just having the students be in the space doing a creative writing or a response or a um, projects based on a particular artwork or theme in the exhibition. So they've really ranged from much uh, more elaborate and complex and integrated to kind of a one off on a particular um, exhibition or, or artwork. So um, there's a full range of types of collaborations that um, that we're happy to uh, welcome faculty and students to you know make use of the gallery for purposes that serve your classes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then, um, or if there's anything that Salt wanted to say before um, I stop that, but then I figure we could just go into Q&A or just if anybody had any ideas they wanted to share um, about what they might be interested in doing with the gallery. Was there anything that you all wanted to, to jump in and add? 
Yeah, I mean, just to just to say that we're here. If you have an idea that maybe is you know just nascent, or you're wanting to bounce some ideas off uh, with an one of us as in the instructional design team, um, we're here to support and help that. So um, you can reach out to us through the email there at self at stonybrook.edu.